cleared the wipers, as you've seen. We're also doing a little job on it, a little tune-up. So it's valve clearances, which is done, just setting the carbs up, and that sort of thing. But a little bit of um, leaking around the gaskets, so I thought we'll have the tops off and have a look at it. So we have, but they're pretty mucky in there, aren't they? That sort of build up a rust, which is what we get nowadays, and you get a lot of this. So I thought we ought to clean these up, which we will. But, you know, it's not too bad. But what is a bit odd is that. Look, what's that in there? And how did that get there? Well, what that is, is a little blanking plug. So that's a little blanky plug, and that would live that will live in there. So it blanks off that drilling. You can see? But for some reason that's worked loose. So you might have to give them a little tap, make sure they're gonna stay in. And obviously we're gonna have to put that one back in. I guess that's the drilling, something to do with the throttle pump. So we'll take the throttle pump off and check that's where it goes. Well, we know where it's where it goes, but let's see if that's what the drilling is. Okay, let's get this off then, see if we can get this out of the way. So I want that little spring off. Gonna go anywhere, I'll leave that there. Let's just get the throttle pump off, see if we can see what goes on with that drilling. My hunch is it goes through into here somewhere. So what have we got? Let me see, we've got what well, looks like a blanking plug there, and we've got a tiny little hole there, and one there, and those, that all seems to be in line, doesn't it? I guess if you blew a little bit of carb cleaner through there, we'd see them come out, wouldn't we? See, what it, see where it's going. Now, who was doing this the other day? Somebody I was watching. Well, I'm not sure about that at the minute. Oh, it's coming out the top of there. I think we'll do this on the bench. We'll get a carb kit and see what's going on. But yeah, you see that's got a longer tail on it. So, I guess it'll go in there. It'll blank the top off, but it'll also go down into a, a finer drilling, won't it? So, you know, what that will do, it depends how far it goes down, what it will cover up. We'll have to have a look. Anyway, that needs sorting out, so the carb will have to come off of there and we'll have a look at it. Our gaskets have all shrunk a bit, you see, how they've come distorted. Sort of there. It looks like it's been pushing past there a bit and leaking. You see how it's shrunk there. Obviously, this is the chamber where the fuel is the float chamber so of course you know if it gets past here you're getting leaking on the top of the carburetor which is what it was it was a bit wet around there which is why I took these tops off which is just as what I did seeing as what I found and I don't think it done any real harm and it couldn't you know it couldn't migrate from there 
in this fuel bowl, it can't migrate from there into, you know, get into the engine itself. So it's not going to do any harm that way, if you see what I mean. It's not like dropping a bolt down the induction. So, strange. We'll see. So, yeah, you see this sort of shrunk a bit with the heat and the fuel, I guess. But, yeah, that doesn't matter too much. That's just sort of an air, th you know, this would just be air. But this matters because this is the fuel, the seating there. So we had a little weeping around the top of it. See like there, it looks like it's been possibly getting past there, you see. You know, it's... And that's where we're getting a bit of wet round here, wet round this edge, which is obviously corresponds with that end. Only a bit, but you know, don't want any fuel about really, do you, on the outside? So we can have a proper look at this blanking plug business. So that plug went in there, didn't it? So it's going that one there, and that's coming out into here, isn't it? So it's coming into our chamber here, through this bit here. So we've got there, that there, and then we've got that little tiny vent there. There's another plug in there. So this is all to do with the drillings, how they fix it, how it's all set up. But in the bottom of the carburetor here, we've got that one there. Well that allows the fuel to go into this chamber here. And then when we press the throttle pedal down, it's forced through this one, which goes all the way down there, and then that goes across there, see there's another drilling there, another blanking there, it goes into there, and then it goes all the way up to here, to that one, and that is where it squirts it out when you push the throttle down, that's that extra pump from the throttle pump, so it comes out through those. So without that on there, it's not going to have the oomph, is it? It's going to, rather than pushing it down there, it's going to allow it to go back through here and back into the chamber. So we wouldn't have been having the throttle pump working properly. Although I don't think it would have been really bad. But yeah, I think the idea is, see, that, that's bigger there than that hole. So with this blanked off here, with that blanked off there, it should blank off some of this as well. I'd imagine it comes down, we'll have a look in a minute but it will blank this lot off and then the fuel will come into here into the chamber by coming into there and then going up and then coming into here so it's always going to be you know, up to that level in there because of the float chamber and, and filling this up and then when you push the pump in when you force the pump down which is obviously on that return spring as well see that's on there when you force the pump down, when that pumps, which will be like that, that will force it down there and it won't want to go back through that little hole because it's smaller. So it will choose the part of the least resistance. Well, obviously the jets are quite small on the other end, but you know, I'll have some oomph behind it then. Anyway, that's it, I reckon. So I'll put that blanking plug in and that should sort it out. So that was it, that little thing, wasn't it? So it wants to go into here, doesn't it? So you see it sort of comes through into that bit. That's it in. And it looks like it goes down and blanks that off, doesn't it, there entirely. So it'll close that one off. So 
So yeah, I think that's what it'll do. So I'll get a little punch, I'll punch that down. So let's use this, just punch that down in there and see what we got. Go, go gently and see what happens. Yeah, see that seems to bottom there. And I think that's it. That's all we get. That's it, I think. That's what it looks like on the others, doesn't it? And let's blank that off. So I guess if we use a bigger punch on the top of here, it might sort of close that up a bit. Well, it won't, you know what I mean. Peen it over a bit, hold it in, hopefully. I think that'll come out now. Okay, I'll do the others a tap on the car, the other couple of carburetors, or two carburetors, and then we should all be all right. We'll get this carburetor back on. We need to thread this choke cable through. It's a bit tricky because it's down inside here, you see just down in there. Anyway, we should be able to do that. This is because it's the three stud carbs and they have a different cable set up. Like threading a needle. It. And I've converted this over to the later style with the ball joints on it rather than those uh, little pins. And we've got these little crusher, you know, these little lock washers, these crushing ones. Well, not crushing, but you know, sprung loaded ones but not split, split, not them split ones that tend to gaunch everything up. But these are the proper fit ones. They use it a lot on various applications on these. They do use the split ones as well, but in other places. Generally engine wise they use these. But you know, not just on these um, Dinos, so it's not a Ferrari thing, it's a, it's a Fiat thing as well. Now on this one, this doesn't do any enrichment, um, like on the later carbs, this just bumps the idle up by moving that cam round, which obviously bumps the idle up like that. But we've got to lock that in, and this end goes onto the choke flaps, onto the quadrant that goes on the choke flaps, which is that lot. And there's the quadrant. And that I had to make that one because it was missing on this one. But that's the quadrant that it goes on to. But yeah, that was missing that bit, so I copied another one. And then we got it plated, so it looks factory. And these are the choke flaps that you had on the front of the thing. And there's these little sprung loaded air bypass things. You can see. And this is a bit back to front, so you've got to hold this one still whilst you do the outside up. Otherwise you bend the cable. Or kink the cable.
Just open it and see, see what it does. It's not returning because I haven't got the spring on it properly. So we've got the carbs back on and with the tops off like this we can see the spray pattern which is what we were mucking around with and obviously that first carb wouldn't have been doing it. So on the throttle pump when you first put your foot down you won't get any spray coming into it but now it's good so we can have a look at that. So they all work now so we see all got a nice spray pattern all three of them. So I'm quite pleased with that. That'll work won't it? Right, I'll put the tops back on and then we'll run it and see what we got. Get them unions on. Now I use copper or or aluminium washers for these, not those funny fibre ones because they tend to shrink and then leak. So, but these have been re annealed so I can reuse these. Right, I'll just turn the pump override on to make sure that we haven't got fuel leaks and then we'll start her up. off on that. Good. Right, let's start her up, see what we got. Yeah, that's all right. Well, that'll do for now. Well, that's sorted that little problem out, hasn't it? I'll go and find some more problems. Mm -hmm.